Stan Gibalisco here uh, with a little theory about why rogue waves form. What causes rogue waves? Perhaps you've heard the term rogue wave and heard about what they can do, the stories that people have told about them, and questioned whether or not such things actually exist or whether they're just wild stories that seafaring people have told. Well, for all I, for, uh, as far as I'm aware, they are real, and I would like to offer for you a theory as to why they might occur and how they might be so much more prominent and destructive than the regular waves that you find on the ocean. Imagine for a moment two storms on the ocean. Maybe they're hurricanes, tropical storms, low pressure systems that go across the oceans in endless procession. And they're always moving. Imagine two of them that create waves from their centers, sort of like what you see in this drawing here from Physics Demystified, 2nd edition, chapter 12. This is a modified figure from that book which shows wave interaction. I would just like to uh, illustrate for you what happens. Notice the interference pattern between the waves from these two storms. Maybe storm A over here and storm B over here. Aren't I imaginative? Alpha, Bravo, Adolfo, Bernadette. I don't know. But imagine now that they're moving across the ocean and they're, they're not going to be tracking along exactly with each other. Even if they were, the whole pair of them would move. Notice what we see here. Imagine the gray regions here, the gray circles as wave crests and the white regions in between them as wave troughs. And imagine that these storms create large swells, maybe 20, 30, even 40 feet in some cases, especially near their centers or their eyes. Now, the interference pattern similarly indicates where the wave crests and wave troughs are. But the wave crests where these two gray lines cross are going to be exaggerated. They're going to be greater than the wave crests that you would find in either storm alone. In fact, it's not unreasonable to suppose that they could be up to twice the height of the waves of either storm alone or the sum of the heights of the two waves. So if this storm A over here is creating, say, 30-foot swells and storm B is creating 40-foot swells, then, there, then it's not unreasonable to suppose that some of these regions here could be up to 70 feet high. Now, these storms aren't stationary with respect to each other. They're moving. Watch. Now we have a monstrous wave right here. That might be a rogue wave. They would tend to form and then dissipate and then form and then dissipate as the two storms move with respect to each other. The, also, the rogue wave itself would tend to move. Now, do you see the effect and how it might be possible, in some cases, not only for a rogue wave to form, but for a rogue trough to form as well? So this wave might move a great deal faster than either of these two storms, or it might move rather slowly. But the important thing to realize is that the height of this rogue wave right here, 
rogue wave the height of this thing right there is a great deal greater than the height of the swells of either storm taken by itself so that is my theory as to how rogue waves might occur and they're probably a great deal more common than we realize it's just that we don't encounter them very often we just don't happen to be unfortunate enough to be where they are but once in a while you'll hear about a 70 80 maybe even a hundred foot monstrous wave all by itself come bearing down on a ship and I don't think I'd want to be on that boat when that thing came through, would you? Stan Jabalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.